Well, good evening and welcome to Sunday evening service. Good evening. I trust everybody got some rest today, except for the cooks and security. <laughs> Taking, looking out for us. All right, let's stand for prayer, please. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you for your love and your care of us, Lord. We thank you tonight for your presence, Lord, and we just ask that you move among your people, Lord God. Change hearts for you tonight, Lord God. Crack hard shells, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we need you, Lord. And for those that don't know you yet, Lord God, we pray that each one here would come to the saving knowledge of knowing you as Lord and Savior. And we ask that in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, Brother Ledger is going to come forward and lead us in song. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Amen. Let's sing number 647. 647. <laughs> Sound the battle cry, see the heart is nigh, raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your armor on, stand firm, everyone, rest your cause upon his holy word. Rouse then, soldiers, rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word along. Difficulties of this world will seem as nothing. nothing. Oh, what a thought! Yes. What a thought! Amen. Let's turn in our in our hymnals to seven hundred. Oh, excuse me, seven hundred. Three hundred seventy-two. Three hundred seventy-two. Message from the Lord, hallelujah. The message unto you I will give. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word. Oh, yeah. 
has a, a current present testimony or praise report Amen. before we go to prayer Amen. well I'll just praise him tonight because he's worthy to be praised Amen. and I'm so grateful to have him in my life and belong to him we, yes we want to pray for Brother Wooten, as he brings the message tonight, Hallelujah. and to, to continue to keep him in prayer for all the decisions that have to be made and responsibilities that all we, that's going on and not going on. Continue to pray for Brother Ledger and, and all his duties, and for Sister Ledger, and for Brother Jerome. Yes, for all of you here that got jobs and chores, everything here that keeps the mission going. Does anybody have a prayer request tonight? I spoke. Spoke, okay. Appreciate our children. Brother Wooten's children, Autumn and Benny. Jerry, go on the ladder and wish him the Lord's blessing. Yes. All the lunches, brother and sister, and mom and dad, absolutely, and the Meltons, yes. yes. Uh, prayer for all those churches that uh, support us and look over us and look out for us that all of their people made it through okay. Yes, and we need to pray often for our people that contribute and support us, all our supporters. You know, Absolutely. it's a lot, a lot of people that yes. support the, the mission. In fact, I was at, at uh, Supply Works this week picking something up, and one of the ladies that worked the counter 
asked how we were doing, and she said she got a flyer in the mail a couple of years ago, and she supports us all the time every time she gets one in the mail. And, yeah, and you know, huh? Did you get her address? She has. She, oh, we have her address. She's brought, She's now on the mailing list. Yes, yeah, she says she's she yeah, supported. So you know, all those wonderful people, you know, it's what keeps Amen. the mission doors open. That's right. But that is made on about on in the ministry of provides also, but the new guys coming in, new faces coming in, old faces coming in. They saw the desperate, they broke it. They need a touch of the Lord, and we'll be ready when they come on campus. And for the Lord to show us the right time for everything. Yes. Yeah, but remember the Popas, too. I thought about them in a while. Yes. Brother and Sister Popa, yes. Good. Good. Yeah. My granddaughter has a physical need. Right, Sister Foster's granddaughter for a physical need. Save loved ones. Pray that God would cast his fire into the sea. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The deep is calm. All right. Let's stand for prayer. Steve, Lord, would you lead us in prayer, please? Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us. Yes, Jesus, for bringing us all together today. Lord, please, uh, please take care of all these, these people. We have a question for everyone today. We know all about them. 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 We know all
thank you for your giving. And Brother Ledger is going to come forward and lead us in another song. Amen. 638. 638. It's time to open up our hearts and see what the Lord has for us tonight through Brother Wooten. Well, it's been a good day today. Amen. Oh, just a wonderful presence of God's spirit upon us, and we certainly appreciate that tonight, don't we? It's always a, a wonderful thing to get in God's Word. Um, I read the scriptures every morning when I get up, and sometimes I get lost in it, and by that I mean I am one that kind of goes through the scriptures. I just don't sit down and read it. I begin to digest it and analyze it and see what the words mean and see what it's intended and I don't get very far and most people that tell me they they read the scriptures they can read the Bible in a year and they they've read it every year for 25 or 30 years and I don't I have to be quite honest I don't get through it in a year I don't know I'm not like everybody else but um, I read it and I study it and I try my best to figure out how it applies to me and how it applies to those that I preach to. And God is faithful in His Word. If you go reading the Word of God and with a, an understanding, not just head knowledge, but heart knowledge, that's, that's where it comes from, is the heart. If you go with it at that, God will show you some things and He'll reveal to you the same things He's revealed to Christians in times past. Praise God forever. He doesn't vary from that, and he doesn't give some kind of weird new revelation to people 
but he gives us just exactly what his word says. And it might be something new to you, but it's been there for a long time. And we praise the Lord that he can help us to be able to understand it. I'm not going to ask you to stand tonight because the reading is fairly lengthy. Uh, I won't do like, I think of Brother Sarver every now and then, how we ask him to preach, and he had us to stand the whole service. And I think, I, I really think that was because we were on eye level with him. And that's why he, he preached that way. <laughs> I told him that. I told him that. You know, I haven't said anything that, about him that I didn't tell him. I told him then. I said, I think you were right on eye level with us. That's why you had us to stand through the whole service. But tonight, I, I'm going to ask you to look with me in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah Amen. chapter 40. Beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture this is. And... Uh, it was so beautiful and so inspiring that Handel wrote the Messiah out of this particular chapter. It's a wonderful, wonderful encouragement, uplifting. And um, when you think about it and when you read it, you maybe get the whole picture of what Isaiah was intending for his readers, for the people of his day and time, and for us today in our day and time. Praise God forever. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah said, comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of our God, the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, Get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and met it out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the owls as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts therefore thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image, and the, golden, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation, chooseth a tree that will not rot, and seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be known, sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth, and he also, and he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy God, Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their hosts by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is of strong power, not one faileth. Who sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. From even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. What a tremendous, tremendous passage of Scripture here. Isaiah wrote it for his people at that day and time as a prophecy unto them. And he wrote it for us that we might be able to look at these things that he wrote and just ask ourselves, who are we in comparison to God? Lord, we bow before you again tonight thanking you for your blessed help. We don't know sometimes where to begin, but Father, we thank you tonight that you have all things in your power and Lord, we're glad tonight for this scripture that Isaiah gave to us. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful picture it paints, dear Lord, who we are. We're but grasshoppers. And we're grass. We're worth nothing. But oh, how you reached down and touched us and pardoned us and brought us peace and gave us grace and mercy and helped us, dear Lord, to know forgiveness of sins and sanctified heart. Praise God forever. And Lord, we're thankful tonight for the words that you're going to help us to preach. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm not sure how I can bring all this together so you can be able to grasp it and to understand it. I, I know what I'm thinking, but sometimes I race so in my thoughts that I get beyond me, and I don't know how to put it down and get it where it needs to be so that you can understand. I know what I'm thinking, and I know what I'm saying, and I know what I'm trying to get across, and hopefully you will too. Hopefully you will too. But tonight, we look at this passage of scripture and something this week that was said, I don't know who said it, can't, I can't attribute it to anybody, and I'm not going to quote it verbatim because I can't remember it verbatim. I just remember the essence of it. And this is what the essence of that statement was. Something to the effect that God is almighty and that we are content to settle ourselves for the things of the world. Something to that effect was said. And when that was said, immediately my heart went to this. Then if we serve the great God of heaven and earth, why are people so interested in serving something less? Amen. Why? Are people so interested in serving something less? Now, you look at this. There are three areas of the natural. There's the natural, that's us, the natural man. We're human. We have flesh on our bones, and we walk and talk, and we breathe, and we smell, and we feel, and we enjoy, and we laugh, we cry. We have our emotions on and on. We have a will to choose, praise God forever. And we see that that's the natural 
But then there's something that's in between us and God. God is the supernatural. He's all power in heaven and earth. Praise God. Remember, he's the one that holds the earth in his hand. He, as we read here tonight, he measures out the hills and weighs the dust to see how much it is and, and carves the valleys and all of those wonderful things when he created this world. Made it for man. And God's supernatural ability, he didn't have to do it, friends. All he had to do was speak it. He just spoke the world into existence. He spoke the animals into existence. He spoke the creation into, into existence. He spoke the stars into existence and knows them by their name. He knows all of those things. But he reached down into the dust of the earth and made us. Supernatural touched the natural. Supernatural touch the natural. And theologians tell us in between us and God, there's something that's called preternatural. And the preternatural is where demonic spirits and the devil reside. And we tend, now hear me, we tend in our, in our world to put God and the devil on the same level. We tend to put them up there and to pit the evil against the good and hoping, hoping above hope that the good is going to outweigh the bad. But let me tell you something, friends. That's not the way it is. And if you see it that way, you are far mistaken in your theological thinking or in your own understanding of God. God is supernatural and the devil is preternatural. He falls in between us and God. Yes, he has power. Yes, he can come and he can create havoc. And yes, he did create havoc to this old world. When he was cast out of heaven, there was problems. He created havoc even there. And friends, he is still not as powerful as our God. Amen. But what I want us to look at just for a few minutes tonight is this. Here in this passage of scripture, Man's picture. Man's picture. Just exactly what do you picture yourself as? A lot of people tend to lift themselves up. I am something. I am somebody. I have made something in my life. I have become just exactly where I want to be and who I want to be. And as a result, friend, they see everybody else on a minimal level that's just a step below them or maybe two or three steps below them. And you have run across those kind, and maybe in your heart you may be just like that. I'm not sure. But the, the picture is tonight that sometimes we picture ourselves just a little bit higher than what we really are. Just a little bit higher than what we really are. Isaiah here said, all flesh is as grass. <laughs> grass. Look around on both sides out the windows. You can see the grass out there that encompasses our chapel and encompasses the grounds that we live on here. Across the road, you can see over there. That grass is withering because there's no moisture for it. And he says here, all flesh is as grass, in verse 6, and withering. It's withering. It flourishes in the morning because it has the morning dew on it. Oh, it springs up. It has a beautiful luster. It has a beautiful coat about it. You can go out there and walk barefooted through it. And it just feels so wonderful on your feet and you just can just feel it. But that's how Isaiah pictured us here before Almighty God that we are as grass. And you and I may flourish for a little bit. We may be able to go forward in our strength and we may be able to think we're something and we're just the best top layer of grass that could ever be. But there comes that time. There comes that hour. There comes that day when you begin to wither. When you just begin to hold up, you begin to lie over. And when the, the dew comes, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't do you any good because you can't absorb the moisture anymore. You can't turn aside the sunshine. You're withering. Friends, we're pictured as grass. 
His goodness is as the flower of the field. Man has a picture that we may be a flower. Maybe we're not grass. May we look at ourselves as a beautiful flower. We had some beautiful flowers here in the last few weeks. The lilies that we had were absolutely gorgeous. They turn aside the dirt and the soil. You can put anything on them and somehow, some way, that, that lily, I mean, that, that, yes, that lily will turn it off and, and push it aside and still, still have the blessings of the white coat and show to you just exactly what it is. That's why Solomon was pictured as such. Maybe you're not a lily. Maybe you're one of these Mexican petunias we have down here. Maybe you're a tulip like we had this morning, absolutely gorgeous. Maybe you're just a cover like we have sometimes out here in the grass that Daniel wants to go out and pull up. Maybe that's the kind of flower. I don't know. But we say, see here, they say, goodness, is this the flower of the field? But let me tell you something, friends. The flower fades. When the little is not doing what you need to do. <coughs> and then again, it may be like honey. It may just us away from those creatures that go by night. He'll protect us. He'll guide us. He'll carry us. Praise God, remember, when we get crippled and we feel like we can't make it anymore, we feel like we're just at the end of our road spiritually, he'll pick you up and he'll carry you and he'll be able to comfort you and give you the strength you need. Hallelujah, remember. Amen. Yes. That was Presbyterian shout. Come on. But friends, we see that he wants to help us. And then once he finishes carrying us, then he'll lead us through paths maybe that you feel like you can't go. He'll take you places <clears throat> you didn't think you could ever be. Amen. And when you get down to some places and you look back over your life, you see just exactly how God led to each point and brought you to where you are right now at the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Amen. 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 Come on. Break it down, Pastor. He pictures us as grasshoppers. You see, it takes us to all creation to be able to help us to understand who we are. We're nothing before him, friends. We're nothing. And here we see that he is picturing us as a grasshopper in verse 22. He says, we're faint and with no might. We're faint with no might. But God wants to help us. Want that off? Um, no, your uh, lapel mic turned off. off. Yeah, it turned off. Oh, I'm sorry, friend. I don't know. Is it? Hmm. Okay. All right. Let me get you back up here, and then away help you just in case it goes out. Stop. No more. Stephen turned it off. Yeah. There you go. All right. Yeah. Praise God forever. You see, we're faint with no might. I can't talk to you. Julius tells me sometimes my voice is too soft. And that's what happens when you get old. <laughs> the grass that's why they always tell you soft, talk soft and carry a big stick. You know what I mean? But here we are, friends. We are being faint. And he tells us we lack strength. I'm not able to make it. Spiritually, friends. And let me tell you something. The longer you serve the Lord, the longer you walk with him, the greater the battles get. Yes. yes. It doesn't get any easier. We had an old couple in our church back home. They'd been married 72 years. And I asked, asked him one day, I was down there visiting with them. And I asked him, I said, brother, I said, is it easy now to serve the Lord? He said, oh, yes. He says, it's easy to serve the Lord. But he said, it's harder than it's ever been. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, the battles are greater now. He said that I'm getting near home. The battles are greater now that I'm getting near home. And friends, we need to stop and realize sometimes we don't have the strength to overcome. We don't have the strength to have victory. We don't have... The, but let me tell you something. There's one that comes beside us and helps us to be able to have the strength to make it through and to be able to have the glory so that we can be able to walk with God and have the strength to make it through. That's what God wants to do. Now I want to look at the other side of this thing. 
this evening. If I have time, yeah, I got plenty of time. You're not going nowhere, so I already know. <laughs> I want to picture God tonight, if I can. That's a terrible thing. You know, I, you, you ever seen those people that can just draw a picture and, and make it look like somebody? And, and then you see those people that paint one upside down and turn it around and it looks like something. It's just amazing how, how they do that. You know, their mind must be upside down. It's the only thing I can figure for them to be able to do. I can't do it. But let me tell you something. Isaiah did not picture the reality of God like he wanted to. I cannot picture to you tonight the reality of God like I want to. Nobody can but God. And you see, we find just glimpses of him in the scripture. We kind of find ourselves maybe like Moses was. Moses cried out to God, let me see you. Let me see your face. Just please, Lord, just let me be able to have a visitation from you. Let me see, oh God, what's going on. And God told him, no man can look on me and live. But he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put you up in the niche of this little rock here, in this cleft. I'll put you there, and I'll put my hand up there, and I'll pass by. And when I pass by, then I'll take my hand down, Moses, and you will be able to see my backside. And then the glory would be too much. How do I know? Because the Bible says when he came down off the mountain after that, he had to put a veil over his face because the glory was so expressive. The glory was so expressive. And friends, we can't picture the picture of God like we want to. But here we see Isaiah pictured him as the glory. And we talk about the Shekinah glory coming. We talk about the presence of God. We pray that the glory of God would come and settle upon us here in our church, in our services. We pray, oh God, let your glory come and move upon hearts that are hardened and move upon men that are unbelievers and move upon the saints so they'll be able to feel thy presence and we'll be able to experience the greatness of a service with you here. The glory the Shekinah glory would come down over the tabernacle there in the wilderness. And it would shine down on that great glory throne, that great mercy seat that was in the Holy of Holies. <clears throat> oh, friends, it would have been an exciting thing to have been a high priest in that day and time. But yet it would have been a very frightening thing, too. Why? Because the high priest went into the holy of holies once a year. And when he went in, he went in, he made sure that everything was done exactly the way God had instructed Moses for it to be done. And if it wasn't, friend, if it wasn't, that priest didn't last very long in the presence of God. Just like we don't. Just like we don't. We tend to think we can get around what God has instructed us to do. Well, you know, I, I just want to, I just want to, I want to think this thing through. And, and, and I'll go to one of the preachers and one of the great campaigns and one of the great revival meetings and, and they'll tell me, you go over here in this room here and, and you make a decision that you're going to serve the Lord. And so a man or a woman or a child will move over into those areas and they'll have counselors over there and those those counselors don't pray with them they talk to them they give them words of wisdom they try their best to tell them this is what you need to do you need to think about repenting you just need to change your ways you need to start the church and you need to read your bible we'll contact you you go back to the church you came from if they we're in a false doctrine. Why would you send them back to the church that they came from? But the glory is what we want. Isaiah saw the glory of God there in chapter 6 where he was in the temple. Oh, friends, that's where we need to be, where God comes. And friends, he was in the temple. And all of a sudden, the walls began to shake. And the temple began to tremble. And the place began to fill with the smoke. And the train of God just drifted down like a curtain in the very halls of that great... ...and took off of it a, a call of fire. 
Father and laid it upon his steps, signifying the symbolism that his sins were forgiven. Then he'd come to a place where God could meet his need. Right. You tell you something, you will not have the glory. You will not have the glory if you don't follow the right way. You can skirt it around any way you want to, but the glory of God will not come and visit you. But Isaiah here talked about the glory. He talked about the Spirit of the Lord blowing upon the people. And sometimes I'll pray in such a manner, Oh God, come and breathe over us. Come and breathe over this congregation. Move upon these people. Brood over us. Friends, when you get a picture of God like Isaiah had, and you read what he says here about God, if that doesn't change your mind, there's nothing that's going to for a while. But you see, we hear that there came a day when Pentecost, when they were told to go to the upper room and tarry until the blessed Holy Ghost came upon them. And they went, 120 of them went to an upper room somewhere there in Jerusalem, and they gathered in and shut everything out and shut every, every business feature out and they got rid of every thought that was out there that had nothing to do with what they were there for. And they got down and began to pray. And they prayed, and they prayed, and they sought God, and they prayed, and probably slept in the pews, and, and prayed, and, and did very little eating, and seeing that God was going to come, waiting, waiting expectantly for the blessed Holy Ghost to come. And this one particular morning, they got down, and they began to pray, as they had for several days now. No doubt some of them are beginning to wonder, is it going to happen are we getting tired? Are we getting weary? I noticed in our own camp, we had a prayer meeting twice a day. And the longer camp meeting went on, the less there were in the prayer meetings. And I wondered, you know, what if some would start it out with them there in the upper room? A whole bunch, maybe more than 120. But as the days went by and the blessed Holy Ghost tarried and so did they, some began to go home. Some begin to drift out. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say that. I'm just wondering. But let me tell you something. Here came the morning. They got down and prayed. And somebody touched heaven. And the blessed Holy Ghost began to come. Such power. And began to anoint. And the wind began to blow across them and to shake the very depths of their souls uh, and began to help them to understand the purifying grace of the blessed Holy Ghost uh, came upon them. Praise God for her. And Isaiah said, the Spirit of the Lord blowing upon the people, breathing over us. Would to God that would happen again. Oh, friends, let me tell you something. Until you get to a place where you're hungry enough for God to have the glory and to have the Spirit of God to come and to blow across your heart and across your spirit, friends, you will not see it. It doesn't take a baby by prayer for the Holy Spirit to come. It takes some agonizing. It takes some fasting and some praying. It takes some people who are dedicated to touch heaven. It takes some people who hold their lightning rods up until the Holy Spirit comes and, and strikes them and the glory goes way down in the depths of their souls. Praise God forever. Oh, friends, that ought to excite us to realize the Spirit of God can still blow across our congregation, can still blow across our hearts, can still blow across our spirits. <laughs> He said, the word of the Lord shall stand forever. We find that he gives us there in verse 8. He says, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. Can I come down and yell it in your heart? And come down and grab your ears and just scream them out like that and say, Forever! Forever! Praise God forever. 
There have been multitude, thousands, yea, millions of people that have come and gone since the beginning of time. But let me tell you one thing, God's word has not failed and it has not fallen aside, praise God. The enemy has tried to destroy it. He's tried to get rid of it. He's tried to remove it from the presence of the people. But let me tell you, the word of God is there. It's always there, it will always be there. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord shall stand forever. He's a strong arm, a shepherd tending the flock, a measure of the world. That's exciting when you stop and realize that, hey, he took the mountains and weighed them in the balance. He weighed the dust. The Bible said in Job, he weighed the waters and met them out and gave them boundaries so they couldn't go any further than where they're going. That's why when people tell me, that we're coming to global warming. And yes, I believe we're coming to global warming. It's not like we're thinking, but we're coming to global warming. But I can tell you one thing. The waters have a boundary that they can't pass. <laughs> Praise God forever. That ought to thrill you, especially you that live in New York, that are going back home and they're telling you there won't be a New York somewhere someday because of the waters, because all, all the ice is melting and everything, and there's not going to be a New York. There probably won't be a Florida either. But I tell you, there's boundaries. Yes, sir. There's boundaries. Praise God forever. There's boundaries. He measured the world. And let me tell you something. He knows where we are tonight. He doesn't have a GPS. He doesn't have a world atlas or a map. He doesn't have any of those kinds of things. But he can put his finger right here and show where you are. Aren't you glad for Jesus tonight who can help us? He's the self-existent God. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need this world to exist. He existed long before he created this world and brought it into existence. In fact, the scripture tells us he planned this world and he had things laid out. He set the foundations of the world. Friends, he knows you and me. He knows you and he knows me. Praise God forever. He's the self-existent one. We find the word God. I wanna give you this. I don't want you to miss it tonight. So if you're asleep, and your partner's asleep on the bench, wake them up just real quick, hit the seat, let them know you're there, okay? This is what I want you to hear. Some, Ken, you and Mr. Allen back are having real problems. Bang on the seat and let Mr. Allen wake up so he can hear this. E.W. Bullinger went through and had a Bible it's called the Companion Bible. And you could get one, that'd be the blessing that would just really stir your heart. He took all the words in the scriptures, the main ones, and he has them in the footnotes on the side telling what those words mean, giving us an idea of what the original Hebrew had to say and what the original Greek had to say. I can't read Hebrew, can you? No, mm -mm, we're, we're hung right there. I can't read Greek, how many of you can? I can't, mm -mm, and I'm hung right there but I can read English. But you know what? The English, when they translated, sometimes didn't give us a clear picture. They just put the word in there so that it would be able to read right. Now, I'm not saying they used the wrong interpretation. I'm just saying they used maybe the wrong word. I'm not sure. I, I didn't interpret. I don't know how they did it. But the word God here, the self-existent one, his name is Elohim. Elohim. Do you know where the first time that word is spoken and his title is? Is in Genesis 1 1. And that word is written 2,700 times in the scriptures. The word Elohim. But all you see in your Bible is the word God. You see the word God for Jehovah. You see the word God for Jehovah Jireh. We see the word, and on and on and on, all the words that make up the names of God. But Elohim means in connection with the creator. 
brings me and you into the creation. And God, in Genesis 1-1, shows himself as the creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What a wonderful statement. You could stop and study on that one for several days or weeks if you're inclined to do so. But Elohim is the God, is God the Son. And this is what he said. He is the living word. The living word with creature form to create. And he brings out that same word is in John 1.1, 1, 1, Colossians 1.15, 1, 17, and Revelation 3.14. And later with human to redeem, John 1.14. So the word Elohim has a great has a great propensity for you when you read this scripture here because after all, God is the self-existent one and how he does it, I don't know. I can't tell you. I can't give you that. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. But we do know that God created us. And we do know that the word of God is found in John, St. John 1 one, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah forever. Yes, Jesus God. Christ is God in creature form. Praise the Lord forever. Well, i got to get off that. The self-existent one. He's the majesty of all the earth. He's strong in power, never failing. How many of you see God fail you? Anybody here want to raise their hand and say, God failed me? When did God fail you? Were you where you supposed to be when you were trying your best to see God work in your life, in your heart? Again, we go back to the same beginning of are you doing what you're supposed to do? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? But he's strong in power. God reaches down. You remember when Jesus was here, Jesus touched individuals' lives. Men and women would bring, their, and some would bring their children, and they would come to him. They wanted Jesus to touch them. They wanted Jesus to give them healing. They wanted Jesus to change their life so that they wouldn't be like they are. They wanted to be something. And Jesus would. Sometimes he wouldn't even touch them. We tend to always think that he touches them, but he didn't always touch. Sometimes he just spoke a word. He just spoke a word, friend. <laughs> just, just spoke a word. Amen. He's strong in power and never fails. He just spoke a word, and it made all the difference. It changed the whole picture, friend. Mm -hmm. And he's still the same way today. Yes. God's not like a battery where he runs down and has to be recharged. His power, his power goes on and on and on and on. Praise the Lord for that. We see that he's the everlasting God and the creator, and he's a renewer of man's strength. A renewer of man's strength. We find over there at the end of this chapter here, who says, Hast thou not known? <coughs> Did, didn't you know? Have you, haven't you heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not and neither is weary? There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. He giveth power to the faint. If someone is faint-hearted around you, you usually tell them to sit down and bend over and put their head between their knees if they can. Now, I don't know if I could do that. But, you know, that's what they want you to do if you get faint-headed. And you think you're just going to pass out and you're going to kill over. Just, you know, there you go. Mm -mm. And sometimes we don't even know the brother or sister is getting ready to faint. And all of a sudden they're laying on the floor and wondering what will happen to them. Maybe I should check them out. 
But you see, we find he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even though the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly <coughs> fail. He says, they, they, they that wait upon the Lord. Yes. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Oh, how glorious. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. He is a renewer of men's strength. When you get tired, and I believe this doesn't just apply to the physical. I think it applies to the mental and the emotional and the spiritual. Amen. When we get to that place where I just feel like I've just can't go on there's not another step for me to take then the spirit of God comes down like a great eagle and lifts me up and helps me to feel the strength of him under me girding me holding me up and helping me during the stressful the difficult the hardest time of my life Just a side note here, this last year and a half has probably been the hardest time of my life that I've ever lived. And there are a lot of days that I go home and I sit down there and I cry, Lord, why? And then I stop and I say, Lord, thank you, thank you for not letting her suffer. Thank you. And I, I just have to look at the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord, that she made it home. Thank you, Lord, for the times of fellowship we had. Thank you, Lord, for the time she was just really doing dumb things. You know, you don't forget those things. The kids and I will get on the phone and do a conference call and we'll all three sit there and cry. And sometimes we'll sing together. And sometimes they'll tell something their mother did that was really dumb and goofy. And we just sit there and just laugh and laugh and laugh. Amen. But even through all of that, friends, this has been the hardest year and a half of my life. <coughs> but he comes as a renewer of my strength and helps and friend whatever the stress is that you're going under you don't have to go and meet it with a bottle or a pill or pornography or illicit sex you don't have to go out there and hunt for something to satisfy if you'll cry out to God he'll be a renewer of your strength and help you and help you Tonight, if you don't know who I'm talking about tonight and who I've given just some little glimpses of out of the scripture that Isaiah gave to us, I want to introduce you to him. And if you'll come down, we'll pray with you and you can meet the king of heaven. He'll step down out of his throne room. He'll come with open arms to receive you. He'll be right here to change and transform your life and give you victory over sin. Not just when you come to the altar, but every day, wherever you are, whatever you're facing. I want you to stand with me. You know where you are tonight, I don't. Some of you I know need to be down here. Some of you are lacking. Your strength is heavy to weigh. And this is where you need to be to meet Jesus. The blessed Holy Ghost can help you, friend, tonight. Don't, don't delay. Don't dilly-dally, as we say back home. 
Because, friend, the renewer of men's strength is here to renew your strength and to help you. He wants to bring you down here to pray. Oh, but I, I pray it at my bunk. I, I, I pray out underneath the picnic tables. I pray at home. Some of you that are at home, maybe. But friends, that's not like having the saints of God to gather around and pray with you. Come on, friends. You know, we will never, ever be like this again. Never, ever will this congregation be like this again because some of you will leave. Some of you may get sick, be in the hospital. Some of you may get run over by a car and wind up in the hospital and not be here. So see, your place will be empty. So where are you tonight? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you stand before the great king one day and he says you depart from me? I never knew you. I'm sorry. You were a worker of iniquity. What are you going to do? I heard him preach the message there at the Fort Myers Rescue Mission, and I didn't heed. I thought I was better than that. I thought I was too good to go down to that altar and pray. I didn't want my back to the people. Some of you need to repent. Some of you have bitterness. Some of you have scorn in your heart. Some of you are misguided spiritually. But let me tell you something. He is a renewer of your strength. He will take you and show you and guide you where you need to be. Just hesitating just a minute. Brother Ledger, dismiss us from the service. Those of you will, come on down. Let's pray for these men. Pray, Brother Ledger. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this precious visitation of your spirit here tonight. And Lord, we want you to know we appreciate you and thank you for coming and meeting with us. And asking you now bless us around the altar as we pray with those that